Hi everyone, I'm Brian with Obedia. Today we're going to talk real quickly about pre-fader and post-fader sends in Studio One. Let's dive right into it because this is pretty straightforward. I have an audio track I've been working with here in Studio One. I want to take a look at my console in order to start looking at my aux, sends, buses, and etc. In order to do that, I'm just going to double click right here on my track inspector. This opens up my console immediately. And now in my console, my channel strip is going to be in its expanded mode. That means that this little button right here has already been pre-clicked for me. That's the expand button in order to expand my channel strip. So I'm looking at the expanded version of my channel strip. Now, I'm going to create a new send, and I'm going to do that by simply clicking on the plus symbol right here and selecting Add Bus Channel. Now, a new bus has immediately been created. I can rename this if I want to, and I'll usually call this FX or something just to allow myself to keep track of what it is that I am doing. First thing you're going to want to do is make sure that that bus is turned up. Now, anytime you create a new bus, it's going to start off on a send level of six decibels below zero. You can adjust that in any fashion that you would like by simply grabbing the little blue slider right here. That effect bus is going to be immediately activated as notated here by the little glowing blue power symbol on the send. Now, uh, because I know this is what you guys primarily want to see, the question is, how do I turn prefader on and off? Prefader is easy to engage by just clicking on the little symbol right here in my send. Click on that. When everything glows yellow, that means I'm now in prefader mode for my send. If that was all that you're looking for, then you're good. You've gotten what you need on this video, and you're probably good to go because you probably understand what prefader and post fader send is. For those of you who don't, let's uh, talk a little bit about that. Now, in order to illustrate this for you, the easiest thing for me to do is play back some audio. I've put my send back into standard post fader mode, which is the standard mode for any new send that I create in Studio One. Now, I'm going to show you how this works, and then I'll tell you what it means. I'm going to play back my audio, and I'm going to adjust the gain volume here for the channel strip that my audio resides on. As I do that, you're going to notice the volume of my send channel uh, and my bus is also going to go down. Let me show you what that looks like. All right, so you notice that as I adjust the gain on my track, on my uh, channel strip right here, you'll also notice that I'm not moving the fader at all for my bus but the volume of that bus is being attenuated as a result of me moving the fader on my track. This means I'm in post fader mode. Post fader means that as the volume, as the audio gets played out through this track, <clears throat> it hits this fader and this fader attenuates the volume as it makes its way over to my send. Now, of course, I do have the send level as well, which allows me to attenuate things a little further, but everything is going to be reliant on that one fader. That's because I am in post fader mode. So, of course, this means after the fader. Now, if I go into pre-fader mode by clicking right here on this little icon and making the uh, send glow yellow, that means that I'm going to send a copy of that audio out from this channel strip and to my bus, but I'm going to do that without having it touch this fader. So, of course, pre-fader. That means all the audio, all the gain is pre-fader. It doesn't hit my fader, and therefore I keep sending the same consistent level to this track, to this bus track. Now I'll show you what that sounds like as well. I'm going to play back, and when I do, I'm going to adjust the volume of this track that my audio is on. But you're going to notice that my level meter for my bus will stay the same. Let me play this for you. So you see, I essentially have two different streams of audio happening right there. Now you can see what this also means is that what's happening is that the send volume here on my, on my actual send control specifically is going to control how much of this audio track is being sent to my send. So the reason that this is useful is because this allows you to do what we call parallel processing. Now usually we'll do this on drums and sometimes on vocals, but you can do this on anything that you would like. 
Because what parallel processing is going to allow us to do is have one nice clean signal coming out of our primary channel strip, which is the primary strip that I have right here. But I'm also going to be able to, at the same time, send a copy of that audio out to my bus track that I can then add new effects onto. So in this case, I could go into my inserts here in Studio One, and I could suggest I could uh, select something such as maybe a reverb or a compressor, or something along those lines. When I select one of these effects and place it onto my send track, again, everything is going to be happening pre-fader. So in this case, I can turn down my main track, and this will allow me to specifically control everything that is happening on my bus right here. So the reason that this is really nice is because it's going to allow me to really keep a clean signal as I'm working with my mix. Uh, again, if I decide to use parallel processing, I'm not going to be treating any of the audio, anything that's happening on my original channel strip right here. I can keep everything as clean as I want. Of course, I can still instantiate plugins onto that section if I want to uh, in order to treat my audio, but this is a great way to be able to uh, sort of have a nice clean signal and a nice affected signal sitting right next to each other. They are parallel to each other. Therefore, this is parallel processing. Again, there's a lot of different ways you can make use of parallel processing. It's very useful on drums where it's really nice to have my nice clean drum sig signal happening on one track, but then on a separate effect bus, I can bus out all of my drums to that specific effect bus. I can put all of my sends into pre-fader mode and I can adjust all of the effects on my send track and get a nice solid mix and be able to really attenuate and control that, get full control because I'm doing everything in pre-fader mode. So uh, you, you're going to want to play around with this a little bit because as I say, it's something that while it's very cool, as with any other technique, it's something that you're really only going to get to know as you use it on your own mixes. I've shown you here what it sounds like and how it is that it actually changes my own mix, but you're going to want to use this on your own. And just to recap real quickly, all we need to do in order to make this work very simply is to instantiate a new send on our track. We're going to do that in Studio One by clicking on the plus symbol, selecting Add Bus Channel. I have a new bus. Now I'm going to make sure that that bus is turned up. I'm going to set this bus into pre-fader mode by simply clicking on the little icon right here. When everything glows yellow, I'm now working in pre-fader for this send. And of course, this now means that anything that I play back, if I adjust the gain on this fader for my main track, I'm not going to be adjusting the gain that's going to my send. I can do that by simply grabbing and moving my send level right here, but this will keep everything consistent, give me a, a nice clean signal on my first track and give me a nice affected signal that I can play with on my bus track. So there you have it guys. I hope that this is useful to you. As I say, uh, parallel processing and pre and post fader sends is something that you're just going to want to use in your mix and get used to and find out how it is that it actually affects your own mix. But if you have questions or comments or if there's something that I've missed, or if maybe you want to work one-on-one, -on -one, give us a call here at Obedia. Get in touch with us on Facebook or on Twitter. Or you can email me. I'm brian at obedia.com. You can also call me seven days a week at 323-319-4051. Talk to us about how we can work with you one-on-one -on -one to help you get the most out of your hardware and software and everything uh, that you want to do with music is going to be right in front of you and easy to do when you're working with an Obedia technician like myself. There you go, guys. I hope you found this useful. And as always, get in touch with me if I can do anything else for you. Thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you next time. Take care.